Okay, uh, can everyone see? Yep, we can. Okay, so um, I'm Marcel. Um, I'm a founder of Infogear. And what we want to do is we want to revolutionize uh, mechanical power transmission. So the problem we're solving really is um, in chain technology. So for example, in a roller chain, which is used in quite a lot of um, chain-based systems, so cars, motorcycles, conveyors, lifts, uh, ships, uh, and um, all around the world. The, the big problem that they have in mechanical wear is that the transmission force just acts on one tooth at any one time. And that's why we need to have metals, um, high strength metals in all of our gearing and transmission systems. So that's what's really kind of holding us back. So the problem is massive. Um, it's the main cause of downtime, maintenance um, and delays. And the market is worth over 9 billion uh, by 2022. So what we do is we reduce mechanical wear. So our, our uh, patented chain uh, reduces mechanical wear by distributing that force, that load amongst all of the two from the chain part. And by doing that, we therefore decrease wear and we increase performance. And what this means is that we'll have a reduction in wear, reduction in downtime, reduction in weight because we can use uh, different materials now. So we don't have to use those heavy metals. We can shift to um, high strength plastics and carbon fibers and we can retain that really high efficiency. So we're working uh, with the advanced propulsion center in regards to automotive, the AMRC uh, RC in regards to manufacturing, British cycling, uh, doing our physical testing there and ISVR consulting in regards to marine diesel applications. So we have hold two patents um, and we've also uh, done an IPO search uh, proving that our patent is unique and doesn't resemble prior art and intent independently verified in prior innovations. Um, team wise, uh, there's myself, I am experienced in mechanical engineering consultancy. Uh, we've got design and modeling and finite element analysis um, from Bristol Imperial. Um, and we have a head of marketing, Chloe, who's helped with uh, the newsletter and outreach. Um, a Varazi panel, we have led by uh, John Badrock, who's had over 30 years of experience in chain injuries chain industry, specifically with uh, Reynolds, which is one of the world's biggest chain manufacturers. Uh, Tim Baker has made uh, F1 and Le Mans um, machines and uh, uh, Helen Panzerino, who has started up multiple businesses. So we make money um, via IP licensing because it would, it would be, we think it'd be stupid to manufacture so many different types of chains, so many different uh, sizes and so many different materials. Um, we then take that royalty uh, when it's used in the applications. So timeline wise, um, we are, have raised pre-seed. Uh, we've been accepted onto the advanced Center TDAP program. We're now raising again uh, and also doing our POC. And that's what we're raising. So we're raising 250K uh, for IP protection, prototyping, marketing, and legal process. Okay, uh, that's, uh, that's me done. So, uh, Hope that was okay for everyone. Excellent. Hey, this was uh, interesting. Sounds. Uh... So I'll try and stop sharing. Sorry. Excellent. Great. Great. Uh, Bruce, any any feedback from your side? Um, well, I know uh, you had a short amount of time, so it was kind of quick. Um, I guess you first thing is. Um, you know, you talk about a little bit about the application um, and you mentioned the escalator, but um, I, I think it would be good to just go into a, a few more diverse applications where, where gears and drive is used um, and, and to put a little bit more behind the statement that there's, it's a $9 billion market. Um, maybe break that down a little bit and just give a little bit more uh, substance and rationale, uh, justification for the $9 billion claim. Of course. Of course. Um, second, um, uh, I, I know it's, you know, it's uh, IP that you have, 
Um, maybe just a little bit more about how it works or just a little bit about the technology that you've developed. Yeah. I didn't get any sense of really what that was other than you have a, a special uh, invention that's going to take the weight off of each individual uh, gear, but just a, a little bit more ju just okay. to, um, uh, you know, for that. And then since it is a licensing model, so um, who is your target customers? Uh, you're not you're not selling this to the end, end customer because you're trying to license this to some uh, equipment manufacturers. So a little bit about your target uh, target um, customer base might be good. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for your feedback. That's uh, very helpful. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, I'll give you a few few things on, on my side. Uh, first of all, the uh, name. Uh, we, I didn't really get the name of this, uh, of this project. So I think in the presentation, you want to make sure that the name is there because in the end of the day, you know, investors are going to speak with each other or clients are going to speak. And I say, you remember those guys uh, from London? What? And if they don't remember the name, if it's not like a catchy name that you put inside the presentation, uh, they're probably not going to remember as well. So I would kind of highlight the name and find the name if you don't, you could probably, you, you have a name. It's a, a remind again in, in figure, right? Yes. So yes. basically just put it out there. So it kind of connects with the, the presentation. Uh, or on each slide, do you think? Like, yeah, or you know, you could do it for example on the, uh, on the top of the slide, you know, like a, how do you call it? A header. So you yeah, can kind of, uh, yeah. that's what people remember. Uh, I uh, think that I would maybe uh, stress a little bit more uh, why you, you know? What, what made you the special people who are sell, solving where, uh, where uh, or tier? Uh, because the idea is that uh, um, this is a giant problem. I think I'm pretty sure companies like Bosch and Siemens and all those guys are trying to solve this problem. So of course uh, you kind of want to, so it sounds almost too good to be true uh, yes. without giving a little bit of a cover story of this is why we do it. This is why those guys are not doing it and why we're in a unique position to actually uh, do something revolutionary here on, on where. So uh, I, I would probably uh, uh, take, uh, take a little bit uh, of that as well. Sure. Uh, sales, people are going to ask you, what's your sales? Uh, so of course, uh, you want to you wanna tell them um, in the beginning already, look, we're currently in the patent uh, uh, mode and, current, da, da, and we haven't started the prototyping yet, or we did. What did you do actually in prototyping? You probably will have a little bit of a problem with them um, uh, uh, not having do you do you guys have some kind of a prototype um yeah we do have prototypes um so we've done we've done 3d printed prototypes uh and now we're making plastic prototypes for our physical testing excellent so this is something you definitely want to share in the presentation because in the end of the day investors and and, and even clients and everyone who you're, you're trying to pitch to uh, other than the idea they want to know what was done until now and you kind of want to share everything any every milestone even if it's not impressive just to show them uh, that on the execution level, uh, you're also executing, uh, which is important. And by the way, virtual prototyping, you have the link there to, to Antis, check it out later. It will be great if you can uh, apply to the program. Um, Thank and, you. Um, that's, uh, I think that's basically it. I will just, uh, just say that, uh, again, I, I, Bruce is from the field, so he, he knows it well. And uh, I share his feedback uh, that I didn't really understand how it connects to uh, the machinery, what's what's in there now. So if there would be some kind of a photo or a chart of connecting this unique thing with with current devices, with what people are using now, just to get a little bit more understanding of how it works, uh, it would be good. You have to remember uh, investors, a, a lot of them, uh, do not know technicalities, which means that it has to make sense. And, you know, the easier way to make, uh, to make sense is basically from a... a showing and photos, especially when it has to do with physical devices. So uh, definitely work on that. Uh, 